Panorama TV presents How They Do That, where we explore the world of professional photographers and share their techniques with you. Here's your host, Mark Wallace. Hi everybody, welcome to this week's episode of How'd They Do That? My name is Mark Wallace. Well, normally on this show we feature professional photographers, but this week we're going to break our rule and feature a photographer named Ken Peterson. Now, Ken is a weekend shooter. He shoots weeknights, he shoots product, he shoots all kinds of still lifes as well as, as, well as portrait photography. And the reason we're featuring Ken is, well, I visited him at his home and I just couldn't believe the studio that he built in a room inside of his house. And I thought a lot of people would probably want to see this and learn how to do it for themselves. So we're going to go take a look at Ken Peterson's studio in his house. Well, here we are in Ken Peterson's house. This is Ken. Thank you so much for letting us be here today. I'm really excited. Ken and I are good friends, and so it's nice to sort of show off some of your handiwork. Well, we are actually inside this square of studio that you built in your house, and it's built at an auto pole. So tell us a little bit about this square of studio. What is it all about? Well, I started out in about a 10 by 10 room with light stands, and it just didn't work. They took up pretty much the entire room. Okay. So I was reading about auto poles and thought, what a great opportunity to try them out and build a little box to hold all my equipment and shoot great photos. And here it is. And so you have four auto poles, one in each corner, and then you have these pipes right like this. These don't look like normal. No, what they're not they? normal pipes. Those are fence rails. Fence rails, okay. So I attached them with uh, two super clamps, mm -hmm. uh, bolted the super clamps together, and put up uh, the framework. So you, you, this is out of your brain, this kind of thing. Um, that's pretty cool. So you can actually do either what you did. You can manufacture your own little attachments, or these things called U-hooks, which I don't think you've seen before, but you can actually plop some things in. They're not quite as secure as what you have, but that's really neat. And then I'm also noticing that you're sort of uh, the king of organization. So uh, tell us what these little red things are and how you have all your stuff organized. And I'll switch places with you here so you can sort of walk us through this. Well, these little items uh, picked up from a local hardware store and I was just so tired of, I had cases for some of my stands and tripods and you know going and digging them out and putting them back up. So I thought, you know what, what's an easy way to do it? Hang them on the wall. If I need something, it's uh, arms reach away. And that's a very affordable solution. So we've got uh, light stands, travel tripod, normal tripod. Uh, you have a mono, you got a lot of tripods. Is there a reason for all the tripods or you just uh, have one for each type of camera that you use? Uh, no, this is uh, my first tripod that I got, you know, a few couple of years ago and uh, it's extremely heavy. Oh, right. And as I started getting more taking outdoor shots, I went to the Manfrotto uh, carbon fiber, which is probably half the weight. So I'm going to grab one of these guys right here from behind you. This is a, a super clamp. Manfrotto makes these guys. And um, so we'll try to get a really tight close up. So Ken's got, I don't know how many, 15 of these or so. Um, and what I've seen you do is you actually light, uh, you put one of your lights right on there and then you can attach this to one of the rails. And so you can position your lights anywhere you want um, on this square just by using one of these super clamps which is uh, a pretty nice deal. Um, is that working out pretty good for you? Or is there... No, it works out great. I have two rails that I can slide back and forth. Uh, one of the challenges, you have to make sure you secure the rail. Uh, right. When you have these heavy lights on them, they're gonna push forward. So I had, to, I had to really spend some time figure out what's going on. And, and you'll notice that after I attach them to the super clamp, I put an extra screw in the rail so it cannot move. So if anybody's gonna Excellent. try that, make sure you secure the rail or it'll spin right around on you. Gotcha. So the, the rail is what you put the extra screw in, not the super clamp. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, these, these can crush a hand if you, <laughs> you stick your hand in there. They're really, really secure. They do well. And then you have a bunch of other things here. So you shoot not only portraits in this space, but you shoot as well uh, some still life kind of stuff. Um, so show us some of the stuff that you have over here for still life. We have this table back here, um, and then you also have some glass. Well, Mark, this is uh, one piece of glass that I use. It's about a half inch thick. Uh, black glass, picked it up at a thrift store for about 10 bucks. Uh, I also shoot on a half inch piece of uh, Lexan, which is a white Lexan that's very translucent. What kind of stuff do you put on there? Is it still life kind of flowers and things like that? Exactly, or some product shots. You know, I've mm -hmm. shot uh, a few items that you really get that nice reflection. Is it hard to control the light as it's, you know, all the reflections on the light or is that, do you just have a nice front light or how do you control that from showing up in your images? Yeah, well, see all these little boards over here? Mm -hmm. So I have uh, bounce cards in white, small pieces, as well as uh, reflective. Awesome. 
and set them all up and really try to control the light, the reflections, and get that perfect shot. And I've seen some of those shots. They look terrific. Well, let's talk about this, these uh, paper rolls here. It looks like you have these on, again, on your auto poles, and you have an X-Pan system, which is a, uh, a little system that allows you to move stuff up and down. Can you show us how that works? Yeah, there's a pulley system over here. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, you just draw Pretty them up simple. and down. Just, yeah. <laughs> Pretty simple. It goes uh, up and down, just yeah, like curtains. Which is really nice because that was my first backdrop, which is a cloth yeah, backdrop right. and very difficult to use. Now this is paper and uh, how do you shoot people on a seamless, because we're on carpet that's really thick and soft. Well behind uh, this piece of fabric I have a 4x8 sheet of uh, plywood. I drop it down, put the paper on top of it, and then clip right to the front of the plywood ah, okay. and uh, makes a very stable surface for somebody to stand on. So you're just basically making your own hard floor for just a time. And that's really nice and you've got some other things hidden behind here so you're really using your space very effectively. I like that. Now how do you trigger all of these lights because it could get I think uh, a little dangerous with sink cables everywhere. Well it's interesting you bring that up because here is a whole pack filled with sink cables. Once again king of organization. <laughs> and uh, as I've tripped and tripped other people I right. switched over to the pocket wizard so okay. the mini and the uh, flex. So it looks like in the old days for triggering your speed lights, and you have some speed lights here, you're using a, an extension cable for TTL stuff, and then a normal sync cable for your uh, Pro Photos. But with the new mini and flex, you can actually do both with one system. Is that right? Exactly. So you get the benefit of TTL metering and normal triggering. That's really, really nice. So it's very, very clean, very efficient. And now over here, uh, along inside this, this is a, a 10 by 11 foot space, I think we measured out. Yep. You also have your post-production suite right here. And this is a MacBook Pro, is that right? That is correct. And you do all of your editing here. Now, what software are you using when you're editing? Uh, primarily Adobe um, Photoshop. And uh, what I use is Lightroom to import and export my images. And then since I'm a Canon shooter, there's a great um, synced cable set up. Yeah, so tethered shooting. Tethered shooting, right. I plug into the camera and, and get the images directly on the PC. And have you upgraded to Lightroom 3 or still on Lightroom 2? No, still on Lightroom 2. Still on Lightroom 2, well, Lightroom 3, everybody gets to shoot tethered. It's really, really good. Actually, That's what I hear. Nikon and Canon get to shoot tethered. It's really, we did a, a video on it. It's really, really nice. And so when you're shooting, especially still lifes, are you tethered and you're watching as images come in and making adjustments that way? Yeah, I trigger the shutter right from here, so I run my cable uh, right into the Mac and then just trigger each each image and I get to see it in a full screen view. Okay, now I also notice over here, I don't know if you can see it in the camera, that we have a, it looks like a Spider 3 Elite. Oh, I thought you meant my fancy monitor. Yeah, your fancy monitor, which is nice, but you also have a, some color calibration stuff, so I'm gonna grab this really fast. So this looks, yeah, this is a Spider 3 Elite um, and you're using this for color calibration, obviously. That's correct and then monitoring the ambient light to make sure your color is all good as well. Now what about printing? Are you printing on site or do you send your prints out? Send everything out. Okay, so Adorama Picks, the perfect place to go for all of your prints. Um, and you can do books and all kinds of things like that. Well, is there anything else, any other secret tips that we should know about in your super small but highly efficient studio? Um, no, I don't think so. I mean, it's, uh it looks like a lot of equipment, and I guess it is, but I collected it over, you know, a, a, a short period of time. <laughs> eight months. Eight yeah, months. Wow, well, it took me eight months. <laughs> uh, but it's been fun, and you really have to shop around. i got to give a lot of thanks to Adorama, a lot of thanks mm -hmm. to you, Mark, for the videos. I mean, you really ignited that spirit mm -hmm. in me. Awesome. Uh, about uh, going out I have many wives that are mad at me for having husbands spend money, but that's okay. Well, um, yeah, it's, it's a passion, and you can tell that. So what we want to do now is, uh, Ken, we want to look at some of your photos to sort of close this out to see what you've created in this space. Thank you again very much for you letting bet. us come in. Thank you. And Pleasure. Ken Peterson, check out his work. And remember, you can go to the Adorama Learning Center to see some of the shots that we are featuring in this video, links to some of Ken's work, and links to all this equipment so you know exactly what you bought and we can save you some time so you don't have to search everywhere like Ken did. Well, thanks for joining us this week. I'll see you next time.
This episode is brought to you by Adorama TV. Visit the Adorama Learning Center where you'll find photography tips and techniques, links to the gear used in this episode, and related videos. For all the latest photography, video, and computer gear, visit Adorama.com. And the next time you're in New York City, visit our store located on 18th Street between 5th and 6th Avenue.